Hey guys, welcome to Stuffbox. In this video, I'll show you how to install a PHP website using Google Cloud Platform. We'll install LAMPstack, upload files using FileZilla, and create SSL. Please consider subscribing if you're new here. I make Mac and Google application tutorials on this channel. Now let's begin. Now let's log into our Google Cloud console. Go to console over here. Top left menu, click on that. And let's go to Marketplace. On the search bar, search for LAMP. And it should show you the first choice, which is LAMPstack. Then select Google Click to deploy LAMPstack. This gives you an overview of what's going to be installed, as well as pricing, and if you've deployed it in the past. To continue, click Launch. Under deployment name, you can name it to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it at LAMP2. For zones, you want to pick the closest zone to you. I'm in central, so I'm going to pick central. The letter at the end just means another server in that same location. For machine type, it's currently set up for small. You can either set it up for micro or set a better CPU with more RAM. You can always set this later on, so I always recommend to just set this on the lowest in the beginning. The next thing is to install PHP My Admin. Just make sure that's checked. That's already checked. For boot disk, we'll leave it as 10 gig and standard persistent disk. And the only other thing we need to do is check allow HTTPS traffic. Since that's all set, click deploy. This will now install Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. I'm just gonna fast forward this because it would take about a couple minutes for it to deploy. Our LAMP stack is now ready. We can check it by clicking on our website using the site address over here. It gives us a redirect notice and there's our website. Now the next thing we need to do is upload our website files to this folder. Let me show you the website that we're gonna load. It's a simple four page website, which has home, about, products, and store. And this is the PHP codes. These are the four PHP pages. Now in order for us to transfer these using FTP, we need to create SSH keys. By creating SSH keys, we'll be creating two keys. One is public and one is private. We'll need to upload the public key to Google Cloud Platform and we'll leave the private key on our computer. On your Mac, open terminal. Then enter this command. I put this command on the description. Basically, ssh-keygen, which is key generator, dash t, the type of ssh key that we want to create, then dash f to specify the path of the ssh keys. We'll put the ssh keys inside a hidden folder called .ssh. Then specify the file name that you want. On my case, it's Kenneth. Then specify the username by putting option dash capital C, and then your username, which in my case is Stuffbox. Then hit enter. From there, you will be asked for a passphrase. It's not mandatory, but I highly recommend that you put one just to make it more secure. You simply type it and nothing will show up, but just type it again and reconfirm it. And then hit enter. And as simple as that, we have created our SSH keys. So now to view your SSH keys, type in cat and the location of the folder. So I'm just gonna copy it from here paste it over here, and then hit enter. Well, that was a mistake. It showed us our private key. What we actually need is our public key. So press the up arrow key on your keyboard to repeat the last command and add that .pub. This will show us our public key. Okay, with that, let's copy this whole thing here all the way from SSH. And then let's go back to our Google Cloud Platform Click the menu on the top left, and then go to Compute Engine and select VM Instance. Now select your VM Instance. If you scroll down on the page, look for the SSH keys. You can see that there's nothing there right now. So what we want to do is click Edit. Then scroll down again, and over here, you want to click on Show and Edit. 
under SSH keys. This is where we're going to paste the value that we copied. I'm going to press Command V over here. And you can see it shows you stuff box, which is our username. And then scroll all the way down and click Save. Since we're already here, click on Edit again. And then look for your network card. Let's make the network card static as opposed to ephemeral. Over here, click on the network card. And if you scroll all the way down, what we're looking for is the external IP. Click on that, where it says ephemeral. And let's create the IP address. Name it to whatever you want. For network service tier, you can choose from premium or standard. If it's a global website that you're building, I suggest you pick premium. If it's a local website, then choose standard. When you're done, click reserve. So you want to have a static IP just in case you need to restart your VM instance, then your IP address doesn't change. Now that it's there, click done. And then scroll all the way down and click save. Let's double check if our IP address has changed. Click back. And we can see over here the external IP is actually different now from what we had it. Now that we have a static IP, let's set up our domain to point to this IP address. So go to your domain registrar. I use Google Domains. Go to your DNS settings. Then look for custom resource records. For name, put the at sign. And then we want the A record then put the IP address from our VM instance. And then click Add. Let's also add a CNAME record. So from here, put in www and then CNAME as the record. Then just put the add sign over here and then click Add. Now it gives us a warning that it will take about 48 hours for the DNS to propagate, but this should take about less than an hour for it to finish. So let's go back to our FTP and upload our website. I'm going to launch FileZilla, which is my preferred FTP. And on the top left, click on the Site Manager icon and click on New Site. We're going to need the IP address of our website, so let's go to Google Cloud Platform and copy this. Go back to FileZilla under Host, paste that IP address. For Protocol, you want to select SFTP. For Login Type, you want to select Key File. For user, we put in stuff box because that's what we set it as. And then for key file, you want to click browse. And then go through the SSH folder that we created. It's most likely on your home folder. The SSH keys are in a hidden folder, so press shift command period on your keyboard. This will then show you the hidden folders on your Mac. You should now see your .ssh folder. Double click that. Then select your private SSH keys. This is the one without the file extension. Click the open button. Then it will ask you to convert the key file, which is normal for FileZilla. Click yes. Then it will ask you for another password for that file. And then ask you for the file name of that converted file. I'm just gonna name it this way so I know the difference. And then click save. Okay, once that's done, click okay. And just click save password here and then click OK again. Okay, we're ready to connect. So on the top, click on Site Manager again, and then click Connect. Then it gives you this warning. Just make sure you are connecting to the right host, which is the IP address, with a column 22, which is SFTP. If you're sure, click on Always Trust, and then click OK. Now it's gonna ask us for the passphrase that we've set up. Enter your passphrase there, and then click OK. And we have successfully connected to our Google Cloud Platform. Let's now locate the folder that we want to upload our website. So double click the topmost folder over here. Then double click again. Until it shows you all these folders. Scroll all the way down and look for VAR. Double click that. And then scroll all the way down again and look for www. And then double click the HTML folder. So this is the folder where we want to upload our files. So I'm going to locate my PHP files, which should be under my user, under the downloads folder. So 
So here are my files. I'm just going to test one file to drag to my HTML folder. I'm going to try the index.php. And it looks like it failed. This is most likely because of permission error. So let's go back to our Google Cloud Platform. Go back to your VM instance and click SSH. I'm going to type in the list command so I know what folders are in here. Our folders are not here. Now let's go to the root directory by typing cd space forward slash. Then execute the list command again just to make sure that we're in the right directory. And this is exactly what you should see. You should see the var folder on the bottom. Now let's go into that folder by changing our directory again by entering this command. If we enter the list command again, we should see the HTML folder. Now we want to know what the permission is on this folder. So type in this command. So this has a permission of 755, which means the owner is the only one that can modify the contents of that folder. So let's modify the permission by typing sudo space chmod space 777 and then the folder name. This command means that anyone can modify the folder and its contents. Then execute the stat command again just to see if it worked. Press the up arrow key on your keyboard and it looks like it worked. So now let's go back to FileZilla and let's drag one file again just to make sure that it works. And that seems to be good so we're now ready to upload all our folders. Great, so everything got transferred and there are no errors. So now let's go back to our SSH and put back the permission of that folder to 755. For extra security, you don't want to leave these folders on 777. It is inconvenient every time you upload a file, but it prevents others from uploading anything on your website. I just realized that I forgot to remove the index.html on this folder. So I'm gonna go back to my SSH and execute the 777 command again so I can delete that file. So now we're ready to put it back to 755 again. And because I want to make sure that the permission actually applied, I'm just going to execute the stat command again. There you go. We're on 755. So we are good. I'm just going to clear my screen here. Now we can test if our website is actually working, assuming that the DNS has propagated. I'm going to open a new tab and type in my domain. Great, our website is working. I'm just going to test certain tabs here. Now the next thing we want to do is make this website secure by adding an SSL. We'll do that by adding free SSL called Let's Encrypt. It should be the first hit on Google, but just make sure that it is the right website. From here, click on Get Started. And we do have Shell Access, which is SSH. Uh, let's click on CertBot ACME here over here. To find the instruction on how to execute the command, over here where it says my HTTP website is running, you want to click on Software, and we're running Apache on Debian 9. Now, how do you make sure that you are actually running that? Go to your Google Cloud Platform, under the menu, scroll all the way down and look for Deployment Manager. Then if you click on your deployment and click on more about the software here, you should see Apache and Debian 9. So let's go to letsencrypt.org to look at the instructions on how to create the SSL. Over here, it says that we need to be on SSH. I already have my SSH open from the previous session. So next, let's copy the install certbot command and execute this on our SSH. I'm just gonna go out from this folder by typing cd space forward slash. This will bring us back to the root directory. Now paste the command here and then hit enter. It will confirm if you wanna install it. Press Y for yes. If you're finding value on this tutorial so far, please click the like button and help me out. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment below. 
Now let's look at the next instruction. The next one is install and get the certificate. So we simply copy this. Then execute this on our SSH. Now it's going to ask us for our email address for the renewal. Enter your email address. Then press A to agree on the terms and condition. Then press Y or N if you want to be part of their email newsletters. Next, enter your domain name. Enter the naked domain and the www.domain.com. This is a normal message that you'll get. Press 2. Then it will ask you for the redirect, so press 2 again. If you're feeling generous, please donate to Let's Encrypt. They're maintaining this so that we can get a free SSL. So our SSL is now finished and it's now installed. We can now test this and see. So I'm going to open a private window and type in my domain with the www. And that works. Now I'm going to open another browser again and try it without the www. And that also works. Now if we go back to Let's Encrypt, we can see that there's another instruction here, which is regarding the automatic renewal. Let's Encrypt is good for 90 days and it should automatically renew every 90 days. So let's copy this command and execute it on our SSH. So that looks good. It looks like it has automatically renewed. If you want to know how to install WordPress on Google Cloud Platform, I created this video, which also includes SSL installation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more.